Hello and welcome, and uh, on my most recent video, a viewer asked if I could kindly make some videos on mastering databases. Now, I don't know if I can help you master, because I don't feel like I'm very versed on databases, but I do use them. And so today I thought I'd make a little video on SQLite databases. So these are databases that will normally be found uh, on like your phone, and they're used for applications more than web servers, although you can use them on web servers, and I will do a video on that. But right now we're just going to look at the basics of using SQLite on a Linux system, in this case a Debian system, but it should be the same on all systems, other than this command to install it. We're going to use sudo apt as our package manager to install. We're going to install two packages, rlwrap and SQLite3. I already have both installed. Now, if you were to just run uh, SQLite 3 and give it a database name, da like database dot, and the extension doesn't matter, sometimes they'll call them DB, sometimes they'll say SQLite or SQLite 3 or something like that, the extension does not matter. But we just basically created a database, but there's nothing in it. Now, at this point, if you were to hit up arrow, you see how I'm getting those A's? Okay, because my version that's inside the Debian repositories of SQLite 3 does not have the function built in for the up arrow history. So what you can do, I hit control C twice to quit out of that, um, is that you can run the SQLite uh, command with RL wrap first. Now when I run that, now if I hit up arrow, you can see commands that I ran previously, which was me getting ready for this tutorial. Now, of course, you can always alias that to just SQLite 3, which is why I did on my system. So if you don't understand aliases, I've gone over in other videos, it's not the topic of this video, but I just wanted to point that out, that if you can't up arrow through your history, try adding RL wrap to the beginning of your command. Now, we have created a database, but there's no tables in it. If I was type in dot tables, nothing shows up. That's the command to list all the tables in this database. Let's go ahead and create a table. So we're just going to type create table. Now I'm typing this all capital. That's kind of the standard. It doesn't have to be. You can write the commands, but it's kind of standard when it comes to SQL and MySQL and, and a database like this. The commands are usually written fully uppercase just to denote that there are commands, but you don't have to. just wanted to bring that out. So we're going to create a table called people. And then in parentheses, and ending our command with a semicolon, don't forget the semicolon, uh, we're going to create a couple of fields. I'm going to create a field called ID. Now there's different types, different value types you can give uh, these uh, items that we're putting into this database. This ID, I'm going to say it's an integer. It's a primary key and it will auto increment. I do this with all my tables. This means the first column of this table will be a integer, a number, a whole number, and the database will automatically increase that number, giving each item in the database a unique ID. This is great if you need to remove a particular item from or search for a particular item, it will have its own ID. Next, we're gonna say comma, and then in quotations, we're gonna give it a field name. I'm gonna say F name for first name. And again, there's a few value uh, data types that we can use. This is gonna be text, okay? Comma, and then I'm gonna say L name for last name, or you can write last name, but I like to shorten things up. And that is also a text field. Let's shrink things down so we can keep it all in one line. Comma, the next one, we will make a timestamp. Now, some databases have a lot more um, value types than, uh, uh, SQLite. In this particular case, uh, there's no date option that I know of for SQLite like you might have in MySQL. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give it an integer because I'm going to use an epoch timestamp, which would be an integer. So integer, and again, it doesn't have to be all capital, but I'm going to type it that way. And I will hit enter and I just created a database, or I mean, I'm sorry, created a table. If I type in dot tables, it will list the people's table that we just created. Now I'm going to create a second table just going to copy and paste this here. So I'm going to create a table. I'm going to call it items. Again, I'm going to start with an auto incrementing ID. I'm just calling it ID. That's what I like to call it. Uh, we're going to give the item a name. It's going to be a text and a description. And that's also a text type and a price. And we're going to give it real, a real number, which is like a float. You can use decimal points because this is going to be a price. So we're going to want a decimal point in there. Now, if I hit up twice, I can do tables. And you can see we have a people table and an items table. Now let's insert some things into the people table. So we're gonna use the command insert into our table name people, case sensitive here. 
for the items that we're, we're, we're putting in. The commands don't have to be uppercase, but the things we're referencing need to match what we did previously. So people, people, and what we're gonna do, we're gonna insert values. We're gonna leave the first uh, item uh, column null. That will automatically increment the number. Now I'm gonna give them a first name, a last name, and then I'm just gonna put in an, a timestamp. Uh, in future videos, we'll actually write scripts to do this, so you can use the date command to get the epoch time, but I just grabbed one here. So there we go. Now, let's add in a few more just for fun. I'm gonna add in this one, Jack Ryan, and this one, Sally Green, and then we'll add in a Jim Smith. Great, so again, we have two tables. So far, we've only put data into the people's table. Let's go ahead and look at everything in the people's table. So we're gonna say select asterisk for all from people. Don't forget to end your line with a semicolon. So we'll do that and it'll list all the items in that table. If we were to forget the semicolon, you'll get this. Don't freak out, just hit the semicolon there and it will complete your command for you. But most commands need to be ended with a semicolon. I say most commands because things like tables doesn't. Uh, now, let's say we don't want to list everyone from the people table, we want to list certain people. In this case, maybe people with the last name Smith. So here I'm running select asterisk from our table, which is people where L name equals Smith. We run that and we get John Smith and Jim Smith. Now note that this is case sensitive. If you don't match the case perfectly, it's not going to return that. There's other options we're not gonna get into in this particular video, but you can do things where you can kind of ignore that. Uh, so again, we're moving along. Let's go ahead and insert some stuff into our items table. So I'm gonna say, insert into items values. Again, null, because we're gonna auto increment that ID. As you can see, we have one, two, three, and four here. And I am going to insert this item. So we're gonna insert item name, hot dog, uh, the description, meat and tube shape, and the price will be $1.50. So we'll run that. I'll add in two more items here. So I'm gonna add in this one. We're gonna insert pizza slice, cheesy goodness, uh, and it's a dollar fifty as well. And then this last one will add in um, a soda. Uh, let's actually, for right now, I'm gonna say the soda is a dollar fifty, right? It, it's going to be fifty cents. But let's just start there. So now we can run our command again. We'll say select all from items, and it will list all the items in there and all the information for them. Oh, but we go, oops, we didn't mean to make the soda a dollar fifty. We meant to make it fifty cents. Well, this is where we can use the update command. We can say update. In our table items, we're going to set on the field, which is price in this case, we're gonna set it equal to fifty cents. But we're not gonna do that for everything. We're gonna do it where the name equals, and again, case sensitive here, soda and don't forget the semicolon. Now, if we list out all items in that database, you can see we've replaced the price for soda, or we updated the price uh, for soda to a 0.5, which would be 50 cents. Now, uh, now we, again, we have two items, or three items, two that are $1.50 and one that is 50 cents. So instead of selecting all items, we can also do things like this. We can say select all from items where the price is greater than 50 cents. That will return the hot dog and the pizza. We can say return all items where the price is less than $1.50. That would be our soda. We can say return all items that are 50 cents. So equals 50 cents. And we can say that are $1.50. So again, especially if you had a lot of items in here, uh, that could uh, affect you know, be, be great to be able to narrow down your search like that. So now we can also, we can say select all from the items table ordered by, so we're gonna order them by the price. That order is in sort them. So now the lowest items, which is the soda, will be listed first and then the other items because they are more expensive. So that's the default. That's the same as writing this with ASC for ascending. That's the default if you don't put that. But you can do the same thing. And instead of ASC, we can see, say DSC for descending, which will do the reverse. Now the more expensive items are at the top going down the list.
Now, going back to our people's table, uh, uh, bleh, table, we can list everyone in our table, and you can see that we have, again, John Smith, and we also have Jim Smith. Let's say we want to get rid of anyone with the last name Smith. Well, I can run this command. I can say delete from people where L name equals, and again, we're not going to get into it, but you can actually do uh, partial matches too in certain ways. But we're going to say Smith, again, case sensitive. So that should delete John Smith and Jim Smith. I also want you to notice that Jim Smith is number four here. So I'm going to go ahead and run that. We'll list everybody that is left. So now we have Jack Ryan and Sally Green. Let's go ahead and add Jim, or let's add John Smith back in. So remember, John Smith was one and Jim Smith was four. If I run this again and add him back in, it, the database doesn't know it's the same person. If I select all people, you notice that it continued incrementing. So you don't have to worry about, in this particular case, uh, we deleted four, so now it's going to continue with five even though four wasn't there, which is great because that, again, that should be a unique field and you don't want to delete a user, add a user, and then get uh, your script confused on who is what. So if it was to continue again at four here, we would now have a different user as four and that could cause problems down the line. So luckily it remembers our auto incrementing there. Now, we deleted, we've, up, we've added, deleted, updated. Let's go ahead and actually delete a whole table or it's called dropping a table. So again, I can list up all my tables. We have items and people. Let's say I want to get rid of my items um, table. Well, all I have to do is say drop items. And I did something wrong here. Ah, it's actually drop table items. I need to update my notes on that. So now if I list out my tables, you'll see that we only have people. If I try to drop table again for items, it's gonna give me an error because it does not exist. So if you want to avoid that er error, you can do drop tables if exists items, and then it will drop it if it exists, but since it doesn't, we don't get an error because we said only do it if it exists. We can also uh, remove our people. Uh, so now if I do tables, there are no tables left. At this point, we can dot quit, and we are now back at our bash shell. So that is all the basic stuff, the, 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 the bare minimum you need to start creating these databases and searching through them. Again, uh, understanding this and, and knowing how SQLite works is great because, again, if you have like an Android device, all your applications, almost all your applications are going to use SQLite databases, which means if you have a rooted device, you can go into the applications folders and actually pull information out of them. But it's also great if you're writing an application that you want to have databases local, uh, SQLite is a great option. Anyway, it, it, and again, it's it's for small databases that you're running locally. You, you can run them on a web server. Uh, but in general, it's not a great idea if you're going to have a huge database because it's not as fast as something as MySQL. And MySQL is also a little bit better when it comes to like web servers because it's actually running as a service that your web server through PHP or whatever will connect to uh, rather than reading a file that it all depends on what you're doing. But just realize there's different use cases for different types of databases. Uh, and you can use any database you want for any project, but some are more suited for certain aspects than others. Uh, so anyway, I thank you for watching. Visit filmsbychris.com. Thank you to that viewer for asking me to do this. And I will do a little bit more on databases soon. Have a great day.